Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is, what's in the box in regards to this game right here, which I will get back to in a minute. Because first, I just want to send you over to tabletopbellhop.com. That is our webpage where you can find all kinds of awesome gaming content, including things like unboxing videos, actual plays, and answers to your gaming and game night questions. We are trying to be a Dear Abby for gamers, and if you've got a gaming or game-related question for us, please send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Or on the webpage, click on Ask the Bellhop. You can also find us all over social media as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. And we're not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. All right, back to the question of the day. What's in the box? Today, I am taking a look at a game I am very excited to check out. This is Sanctum from CG, Check Games Edition. I saw this game at Origins 2019. They had it in a glass case. They wouldn't let us touch it. They wouldn't let us look at it. And I'm like, ooh, what's that? And they said, this is Diablo, the board game. Except they said they can't say Diablo. It's Diablo, the board game. As you can probably tell by the cover, this is a attempt to create a board game version of that style of fantasy adventure where you kill waves and waves of monsters and they drop tons of awesome loot, which lets you level up to kill more and more waves of monsters, to level up, to kill even bigger monsters, to get bigger weapons, to kill bigger monsters, to get better weapons, to eventually kill the big bad boss. So that is what we have right here. This is meant to be a board game version of Diablo. So first I'm going to slip off the shrink wrap. I have not seen this game except for the prototype that was at Origins. I have not played it. I don't know anything else about it, except I love Diablo and I love board games, and this looks awesome. So here you have the back of the box showing off some of the stuff. I will read this off quickly. The dark forces of the Demon Lord have overrun the once great city of Sanctum. No, it's Sanctum, not Sanctuary. Heroes must journey into the hostile heart of that wretched kingdom to the burning throne and fight to destroy him. But only one hero can claim the glory of the Demon Lord's defeat. Will it be you? Choose a character. The rightful heir, the vengeance seeker, the disgraced king's guard, or the trained evil slayer. Trained evil slayer. It's an interesting profession. Fight demon minions to build up your strength. Roll dice to attack. But remember, every skill or item you choose can change the odds in your favor. If you pick the right fights at the right time. From adrenaline designer Philip Naduck. Adrenaline is fantastic, too. Sanctum is a hack-and-slash strategy game. Can you rise to the challenge? What's interesting there is Adrenaline is a board game version of a first-person shooter. So that seems to be Philip Naduck's uh, jam, is making board game versions of video games. So here we have the box for Sanctum. It is, uh, I love this cover. Great-looking cover. Very heavy. Um, I can't really have you feel that, but really heavy box barely the lid barely fits on so i'm expecting a pretty stacked thing here probably lots of cardboard again this is the first time i'm opening this up so i have not seen it before note it does play two to four players age 12 plus in about 100 minutes so under two hours oh we have some plastic and insert upside down insert that's an interesting i don't think i've ever seen a game come with an upside down insert Oh, it seals, too, with the four miniatures. So, you know what? These were on top. We'll crack these open. It's nice to have a place to store stuff underneath. Everything looks very glossy. All right, that is a very dynamic miniature. Check out that pose. I love what people can do with miniatures nowadays. When I got into miniatures, everyone just kind of stood flat, maybe with a sword out to their sidearm. Never got anything like this. That is a big axe. Then we have an archer figure. This will be the character my wife plays because she always plays green. Luckily, she likes elves too, and green and elves seem to go hand to hand when it comes to miniatures. Then we have glue. Very unique looking. And then again, look at the dynamic miniature there. So you just couldn't get that kind of flowing cloaks or anything back in the day. Always really impressed. What's nice, these are made of uh, slightly plas uh, flexible plastic, so it's not going to break very easily. I don't want to try much harder than that, but you can kind of see it's, it's probably not going to break just from being stored in the packaging right here. And then, holy cow, again, 
The pose. That is a fantastic pose. Extremely impressed by these miniatures. The miniatures alone may make this game worth it. Really cool. Alright, I'm already impressed. We have a ton of D6s. Looks like they're just standard D6s. Uh, they're wooden. That's nice. Uh, black with gold numbers. What's nice is that they're actually, the it's inset slightly. The I don't doubt you can see that on the camera. But the, the pips are inset, so that gold's not going to rub off easily. It's a nice touch. Yeah, it's standard six-sided dice. Nothing, nothing wonky going on here. All the sides add up to seven. Then what we got? I am curious about that baggie right there. What are these? Just little discs, okay. I'm not getting a good variety of colors here. I am going to guess, based on the fact this game's based on Diablo, that these are red and blue, that they're going to track some kind of mana and health, and then black for other things. That's just, a, again, knowing this is based on Diablo, you got your red health and your blue mana, black probably for tracking anything else. There are a ton of these. There's a bag full of these. They're a nice quality, a nice plastic. Um, they're ex the same components. CGE is really good at reusing components. They are fantastic at that. Just smart to do as a board game producer. So these are the exact same type of plastic things that you'll see in their other games like Pulsar 2849. Another game I'm a huge fan of. Then we have something new. See, these pieces I have not seen before. These are not translucent. Instead, they're slightly opaque. They're almost marbleized. And instead of being circles, they're little squares, like rounded squares. The edges are cut off on them. So you can kind of see it there. My camera, of course, is not completely cooperating. So yeah, square, squares with um, slightly, like, the edges cut off. Corners cut off. And these are in more color. You got white, green, and red, and blue in here. Having not played the game, I have no clue. <laughs> then we got cards. There are a ton of cards. They're in two separate baggies. What I'll do is I'll take this one apart first. Getting these back in here could be interesting. That is a tight fit. All right. So yeah, from what I learned at Origins is here you got your monster. I don't know how you defeat it. It looks like you need a two on a die. But then this is the part that I love. Every monster drops its own unique loot. And it shows this is going to give you a plus two, plus three or something. It's got a red crystal on it. So you beat up this, whatever that is, hell spawn thing, you get an axe. You beat up this hell spawn thing, you get armor. You beat up this undead archer thing, you get a cloak. And that, to me, just does. It feels like Diablo. I, I, it just, the monsters drop in loot like crazy. So I really dig the artwork. Artwork's nice, evocative. Iconography seems very clear. Looks like it probably has one health, needs a six to defeat. Um, we got, these are probably all just mooks, right? Weak minions, because we got lots of the same type of creatures here. Which is nice, because there's no way you're going to know. It looks like it might even tell you what they drop. So that shows a suit, a helmet. Yep, sure enough, it drops a helmet. This one in the top corner shows a boot. Oh, look, boots. So there's a ton of these. And then I got into what looked like spells. So I don't know how these are sorted. But I have like fireball looking thing. And on the other side, we have some type of spell with rules for how it works. Again, looks like they need dice to cast. It says... Shriek! Only modified dice can be placed on this card to fight. And then we have Ignite. We have a whole bunch of Ignites. Ignite must be common. Alright, what else we got? I see more jewelry. Alright, we have a different type of back here. Wow, I honestly have no idea what these are. Maybe these are like crystals or something that you can put into your... I, I don't know. It just says... Red, green, blue. No idea. Then we got big monster looking cards. Showing two dice. And on this side is all kinds of stuff. So this one says, Venomous Cloud. 
you face two additional damage in the next fight. So these must be some kind of events. Shockwave. Shockwave again. Weakness. So I don't know if these are status effects or events. So that's another type of card. Then we got more monsters of different types. So we got some bigger blue undead. And then we got some like minotaurs. And some wizards. And again, on the back, the loot they drop. Very nice looking. Very cool. Love the art. We're going to leave those here because I noticed some of the backs of these cards seem to be the same. So I'm going to assume I can mix these in. So then we have more of these gray, whatever those are. Red 3, blue 3, green 3. Uh, these are totally new. So what do we got? Poison Blade. Secret Stash. These are two-sided. On this side it says Secret Stash, Explosion, Potion Bag. No clue. Some more baddies to kill. All these ones are up to needing three dice to kill. And of course, equipment they drop on the back. We got some more of whatever these are. I don't know if these are sp specific things you can get. Surge. Rain of Arrows. These look like skills. So maybe that's something you can level up your characters. We got more baddies, two dice baddies, a whole bunch of them, and of course, items on the back. Then we get to more skills, it looks like. Then some really creepy, it looks like Aliens 3 things, with of course, items on the back. And then some more skill cards. Alright, that's a lot of cards. I don't know how I'm going to sort these to put them away, but I'm going to try to keep all the monsters together and put everything else in a different pile. So that seems to make more sense to me, but toss these back in their baggies. And we're going to toss all these monsters together too. Uh, card quality seems good. It's not overly thick, overly thin. There's are all right. Um, feel like they'd shuffle well. Kind of the, the, the smaller cards, which I'm not a huge fan of, but if these were full decks, that'd be a ridiculous number of full-size cards. <coughs> Alright, up next, some kind of reference sheet. Shows move, fight, rest, achievements. And on the other side, you got Force of Nature, Infinite Quiver, Rain of Arrow, Sharpshooter, Surge, and Perfect Fit. So these are actually all different, so they must be based on the different character classes. Because this one still has the same move, fight, reset, achievements, but on this side, it says potion bag, outnumbered, explosive potion, quick draw, poison blade, and secret stash. I am not going to bother reading off the other two. Uh, to quote Rodney Smith, I will leave those for you to discover on your own. And we have an advertisement for other games from CGE. Out in here will be some of my favorite games I've ever played, like Galaxy Trucker and Zolkin. Big fan of CGE overall. Never mind advertise me in my games. And then, wow, quite the rule book. That, that is not a thin book. This isn't going to be a quick one to learn. Thankfully, though, you got a QR code to teach you how to play. Always appreciate that. Personally, I prefer to learn from reading, but it is nice to have the option to watch. I'm not a huge fan of the light text on the dark background. While I like that on my screens, I don't like it in my books, but I do love this component list. Every game should come with one of these with pictures of everything I should get in the box. You got an overview of the four heroes. You got what looks like a really long playing board. That's going to be interesting when I unbox it, trying to get that on camera. Individual player sheets. How to set up your characters. How to play through the game. Looks like tons of examples and graphics. That's always really nice to see. Oh yeah, lot, lots of examples using actual game graphics. Huge thumbs up so far for what I see from this rulebook. CGE has some of the best rulebooks I've ever read. Uh, the rulebook for Dungeon Lords is still one of my favorite I have ever read in my entire life. So I expect this to be just as good. I like the overall dark look. All right, we are all the way through the appendix. So we have 21 pages of rules. That is not a light game. This is not a light romp. This is this is a, a serious Euro game. All right, we have a card that I have no clue, but it looks like it's going to be a storage area for some of the components once you start playing. 
Similarly, uh, I saw those symbols on the monster cards. Two-sided, which is fine. Then we get to the board. Oh, very cool. The board is modular. So it's not one long board. It is modular and two-sided. I dig that art. That is, that's nice artwork. Looks like you have a very linear path. And I see, again, the monster symbol. So I see, like, two weak monsters, one medium monster. So that's probably a progression as you go through. I have to assume this is near the end of the game because I think I see the Diablo here. Is that the same artwork? No, it's not. I wonder if these hook up in a way that they actually make a longer picture. I'm not going to try to figure that out right now. Woo! Boss fight, maybe? I have no idea. But there's only one spot up here. There's a spot for the four characters, and it says five times monsters. Artwork's great. I really dig the art. It does have that Diablo feel. Going through the mountains. Doesn't look like there's any branching path, that's for sure. So it looks like it's going to be a very linear progression of fighting through wave after wave of monsters. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if that's just artwork, but if it is, that's pretty cool. Alright, that's it for the game boards. Then we move to punch boards. Alright, first off, the player boards. Oh, this is interesting. The player boards are like boards. Like they, This isn't going to punch. That's going to store like this. It's a two-part board. It wasn't a thin punch board. That is quite the character sheet, i got to say. What I like to see in this, again, fits the Diablo look, is you can tell there's spots for cards in different inventory spots. So you have, you know, different spots here for different things. Very cool looking. So your boots, looks like a crystal, looks like another amulet. you got a weapon, a weapon, an armor, and a helmet. And sure enough, the blue and the red for your mana and your health. And then, who knows, some item slots, how to store stuff. Two-sided in the fact that it's got artwork on the second side. I dig this. It's a nice way to get it to fit in the box. And then around that, there was other stuff here. So these are just falling out. So I have health potions. And whatever these mean, I have no clue what these are for. We got some other symbols over here. I bet you I'm not going to be able to pull this one out without it coming apart either. Yeah, so these boards are just falling out of the sprues that they come on. We'll just show these off quickly. I'm not going to bother showing the other side of this one. This would be the green character. Then we have the blue character. With very similar components on the punch board. And again, same slots for storing stuff. And finally, the white or gray character. Again, some more potions on the outside. Some little heart tokens. Just a few random punch board bits on here. I have no clue what these are with question marks. Some nice artwork on it. And then, like I said, these boards. It's impressive to get that all to fit. Because there's no way that would have fit in this box. Like, that's, that's good design. Impressive design. That's it. So, obviously, when I put these back in, what's going to happen is I'm probably not going to be able to shut the lid. So, please understand if the lid won't shut, that's just because these punch boards are half punched. If I was punching everything, it would all go back into the box fine. It just, it's not going to rest flat. Alright, I am still really looking forward to this. This looks fantastic. Component quality seems top notch, as usual. Rule book looks intimidating, I've got to say. 21 pages. That's a big one. Well, actually, this will shut because of that box insert. It depends how thick this box insert is. Lots of really nice looking bits. Some fantastic looking miniatures. Again, the quick preview of the minis here. A, a basic enough box insert. That's fair. Yeah, this isn't going to quite shut. So there you have it. That is what you get in the board game Sanctum from CGE Check Games Edition. Uh, this is a game that is promised to be Diablo with the serial numbers filed off. And I gotta say, looking through that box, they're not filed off very deep. You, you can still see a lot of those Diablo roots in here. Uh, the theme of the game, the look of the game. Now, something I did see someone ask that I think is important to know is unlike the video game, this is not cooperative at all, nor does it have a solo mode. So that's going to be important for some gamers, especially people who are fans of the series and playing solo. You cannot do that with this. This is a competitive game for two to four players. Now, I don't know if a solo variant will come out at some time, but currently there is not one. So I think that's important for fans of the Diablo series. I am really excited to check this out. This game looks fantastic. 
Component quality is excellent. Cards look excellent. It looks like a huge variety in the number of cards. So it looks like lots of replayability. Absolutely zero complaints. Oh, sorry. I have 0.5 of a complaint. The white text on the dark background in the rule book, I would have preferred the other way around. For a physical book, I would much rather read black text on a light background. Yes, on my screen, I prefer dark mode, but um, I'm getting older. My eyes aren't great. I definitely prefer it the other way around. But you know what? That's so minor. I'm going to be able to read this. And you know what? If I can't, I can bring it up on the PDF version, blow it up. I can watch the Watch It Play video, which there was a QR code for. So they got me covered. It's a personal preference, I realize. Other than that, 99 point nine five whatever percent awesome looking game this looks fantastic i am really looking forward to checking this game out um what i will do is i will be putting up a review once i get a few game plays of this game in it'll take a little while but once i get a few game plays in um be sure to check out tabletopbellhop.com for when that comes out and of course i'll be sharing that on all my social media instagram facebook twitter youtube all those places tabletop bellhop one word that's it for our unboxing tonight. If you appreciate my videos, please head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping the bellhop. And before you go, hit that follow, subscribe, like button because we love to see those verifications that you like what we're doing.